An Ultimo Guerrero video package. This is exactly the thing they kind of do, the kind of thing they need to do. It's great. Shows him whipping ass almost entirely with his mask on, which I found odd on this one. Well, mo- I got to talk about More it. to say about that. Yeah, well, we should talk about it now. So they did an Okada Ultimo Guerrero match, okay? I watched Collision before I watched Rampage, hmm. okay? So Okada comes out to wrestle Ultimo Guerrero, and Guerrero, you know, he's got his mask on. And at first I just thought, well, you know, there have been other luchadors. They do their ring entrance in their mask, and then they, they take it off and et cetera. But then, you know, he starts wrestling mm-hmm. with his mask on. And he does this entire match with his mask on. And, like, I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on? This guy was, you know, he was unmasked a decade a ago. A decade ago, yes. 2014 with Atlantis, he was unmasked. He And he's wrestled without a mask all over the place. So he's here with his mask on. And then Okada ends up unmasking him and then hitting the Rainmaker and getting the pin. And it's funny because, you know, Tony talks about the AEW uh, wackos. What does he call them? Sickos. Sickos, the AEW sickos. And I think there's this idea that, like, you know, everybody knows. It's, it's, I think there's this idea that there's, like, a more inside crowd than a WWE crowd. So they know all of these guys, et cetera. And if you watch the show, you certainly get the idea that Tony thinks you know all of these people. Mm-hmm. When Ultimo Guerrero got unmasked, this fucking crowd went wild. Like, oh my God, his face has been exposed for the first time. And that right there told me, nobody here knows who Ultimo Guerrero is. At best, they've heard his name at some point. But they don't even know that he lost his mask to Atlantis a decade ago. So it was so bizarre watching this. Like, they came up with a finish... And so they pretended he was still a masked wrestler in order to do this finish. So anyway, the reason I bring it up well, now... There's more to the story. Well, the reason I bring it up now is you mentioned the video package. Yes, yes. The video package on Rampage. So I watched the video package after I watched this, and I'd already like tried to figure it out in my brain, like, what the fuck happened here? If you watch the video package, they only show him from the front with his mask on. Mm-hmm. They have multiple shots of him unmasked, but it's always from behind. So there was a concerted effort to trick you into thinking that he is a famed masked luchador from CMLL. That his mask is... It was, this was the weirdest thing I've ever seen from a promotion that doesn't do this. This is like this weird shit WWE would do. They would just pretend, like they did with Ray. Ray came in with a mask on. They just pretended he never got unmasked. And and here we are. It, this was just so weird. It was bizarre. Well, there is yet more to the story. Because as you noted, Ultimo Guerrero has been unmasked for a decade. Yes. So he's booked on collision. He shows up to work ready to go. Walks in. They say, where's your mask? He says, I didn't bring one. I don't wrestle in a mask anymore. And uh, he has talked about this publicly. In like the hour before the show, the AEW seamstress quickly made a mask for him. So this happened? Th- that's I'm looking at your own website right now. <laughs> really? I hadn't read this. Brian Rose, yes. I, I saw it somewhere else first. But uh, yes, he uh, got this mask made on the fly to uh, appease the bookers, which is... That is so do. weird. Everything about this is bizarre. It's absolutely bizarre. Yes. So... Anyway, there you go. Back to this video package. The kind of thing they need to do, but not on Rampage, the show nobody ever watches. Air this on Dynamite, theoretically, the show people actually watch. Anyway, it was great. Kazuchika Okada versus Ultimo Guerrero. You know what? Uh, Well, I I guess I can't really say that. I was going to say the show would have ended here, like it would have been really good. Because this was like the last main event style match they had on this show, really. But uh, th- the, this was a match where all I can say is the idea of the match was significantly better than the match itself. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was it was an Okada house show match yes. against a 52-year-old Ultimo Guerrero who was gasping for air. And Okada does not work at a very fast pace. <laughs> And then we had the whole mask situation, which was just totally bizarre. And it was just, it was it was fine. But it was kind of sad because, you know, I saw all day on, on Twitter Saturday, people going, man, I don't know what Brian and Dave are talking about. This Okada is the most overrated wrestler I've ever seen. Wow. And it's like, 
This is a man who never saw Okada in New Japan. He just started watching him in AEW. And granted, he has not had blowaway matches at all. And now it's gotten to this point. But he's he's earned making his money. I thought this was the hardest Okada had worked since he's been in AEW. <laughs> really? Seriously. I mean, maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, this was really, really, really awesome. I can say that I got to see Okada wrestle Ultima Guerrero. That rules. If you take away the name value, it was an average AEW TV match. Yes. Mm -hmm. It was fine. Even with the name value, well, <laughs> it was an average AEW TV match is what it was. So the, the, the simple story is Okada keeps going for the Rainmaker, can't get it. Finally, they're fighting on the top rope. Okada gouges the eyes to escape that and loosens the mask. And then later he yanks the mask off and Guerrero has to cover up. Okada flashes his evil grin, hits the Rainmaker, and wins. It was a great finish to a match that happened. It was a great, ridiculous, contrived finish that made no sense whatsoever if you've ever seen Ultimo Guerrero before. But, uh, yeah, that part is true. <laughs> Lexi interviews Top Flight in Action and Dreddy. So Dante Martin is in the ladder match. At Forbidden Door. And the last time he was in a ladder match, he had a broken fibula and a dislocated ankle. Had to relearn how to walk, how to run, how to jump, how to be inhuman. It's crazy, but it'll take crazy to be the TNT champion. Leo Rush interrupts. Wants to talk about last week. I missed last week's show. It was a Clash of the Castle instead. I have no idea what Leo Rush is talking about. No one informed me. But there was something happening last week. Action congratulates Leo on his Rampage win. Leo said he had Dante's back last week, but at Forbidden Door, he wants the TNT title for himself. And Dante, or yeah, Leo says that Dante agrees. And this is a fine example of they told instead of showing when they said show, not tell, because I have no idea what they're talking about. You know, this Dante's got a lot. I've been noticing it of late. Mm -hmm. He's, he's, uh, you know, they got the Action Andretti's and the Darius and the, all these guys. I mean, there's dozens and dozens of them. But uh, Dante, is, Dante is a step above a lot of them. He's, his promos are not like, you know, super exciting, charismatic promos, but he's one of those guys where he feels like the real deal when he talks. Mm. He's got a good face. He's, he's got, he's, you know, he's a pretty good wrestler. But he also is in the same exact place he was in five years ago. And these three in particular, I just, I've ranted about this before, but it was Top Flight and Action and Dreddy against, I want to say, Penta and Commander and Vikingo in like January on Rampage. And outside of Will Ospreay, I honestly don't know if anyone in this company has had a better match all year, and they got nothing out of it. No. They're, I mean, you can go back years and years when like Top Flight looked really good, and then they decided we're going to give him this big singles win, and you know, he got the big singles win, and then it was like... Just went right back to where he was. Yep. It's like these wins mean nothing if there's no follow. That's why. That's why I'm not going to get in the rant again. But this fucking Javon Evans thing, nobody gets it, and it drives me nuts. Like it's so obvious that this is a mistake, and they're oh, you know, they're the show did a great number, and blah 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 blah. That number is not always indicative of how your show was booked, and it takes time to drive people off, and it things that remind people of bad anyway. Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sikoa, or whatever his last name is. Paul, Paul Newman is watching this match. <laughs> and he's not Excuse on me? Cody's side. <laughs> What's the matter? Absolutely nothing. Everything's nope. great. You know, Cody did say that he was looking for a manager. I think him and Paul Newman would be a... <laughs> what a handsome pair. <laughs> yeah. A dashing duo. That guy's a movie star, isn't he? Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.